Jack Wrangler was a one-of-a-kind model who exploded onto the gay adult entertainment scene in the 1970s. He was a rugged, handsome man whose openness about his homosexuality made him a symbol for self-confidence for many gay men. He had steely blue eyes, a muscled physique, and could barely keep his shirt on. What started out as a gig go-go dancing in Hollywood led him to a life in the entertainment industry both in front and behind the camera for both gay and straight porn companies, and also a life with many surprising turns. In this episode, we're going to celebrate Jack Wrangler, a 70s gay porn icon turned cabaret producer who was a legend in his time and contributed dearly to the gay porn industry. His stardom coincided with the gay liberation movement, and for some, he became a role model. This is Demons Define Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Before we continue, I want to remind you to help this channel by clicking the subscribe button and selecting the bell icon for notifications to see more content like this. Jack Wrangler was born Jack Stillman on July 11, 1946, in Beverly Hills, California, to Robert Stillman, an independent film and television producer known for his credits on Rawhide and Bonanza, and his mother, Ruth Clark Stillman, who was a top model in New York and then became a dancer in Busby Berkeley musicals. Wrangler grew up the youngest of three children, having two sisters. They all grew up comfortably, well-mannered, cultured, and Presbyterian. As a child, under his real name, John Stillman, he began his acting career starring with America's tap dancing sweetheart, Eleanor Powell, on the religious theme NBC series, The Faith of Our Children. As a young man, he grew up to enjoy the limelight, something that his father didn't like. Wrangler's father wanted a strong, rugged son, something he did not see in his own. He would encourage and push his son into sports, but it just wasn't something Wrangler wanted to do. As for girls, Wrangler tried dating and liked girls, but not enough to hold his attention. He didn't think that there was any, that you were gay or anything. You were just a kid starting to uh, discover himself sexually. My dad, in his wisdom, felt I better go to prep school. From the 8th to the 12th grade, I went to this place called St. George's. And I remember going to a little store and there was a male magazine. And what did end up holding his attention were newly discovered physique magazines, which upon finding, Wrangler would order and hide away. He would then go on to major in theater in Northwestern University. After college, Wrangler spent seven years of his early career managing the windmill and country dinner theaters with the likes of Betty Hutton, Jane Russell, Yvonne DiCarlo, Gail Storm, and Salmoneo. He was a good-looking man with talent, but despite that, he found it hard to get work as an actor in Hollywood. He did perform in a play called Special Friends, in which he played a former prostitute who becomes a bad go-go dancer in California. He also got small roles in films, but nothing memorable, except maybe for this line from The Bus Is Coming. What in the hell are you doing here, honky? Wrangler himself was a bartender and go-go dancer in West Hollywood. Then the other side of Hollywood came calling. On a trip to San Francisco, Wrangler appeared in a gay play in which he had to remove his shirt. Studio heads at Magnum Studio noticed, and after the show, he was offered a lot of money to do a loop called Ranch Dudes. It was heavily promoted, and Wrangler was now in demand. His first gay porn film was called Eyes of a Stranger, released in 1970. In a matter of five years, Wrangler had made 88 features appeared in countless photo layouts, and did over 900 performance of his Jack Wrangler exclamation point live show and off-Broadway play. Wrangler's charisma was evident from his acting chops to his sex scenes and was well known for his ability to deliver a money shot on cue which made him very sought after in the industry. Some of his best work can be seen in Kansas City Trucking Company under the direction of Joe Gage and then under Jack DeVoe with Hot House, Sex Machine, and A Night at the Adonis. Jack Wrangler was so popular in the mid to late 70s that he began to work in straight porn as well. The gay porn world was still very niche, but the heterosexual porn world was exploding with bigger money and bigger productions. The first time Jack Wrangler ever made love to a woman was in a film called 
the China Sisters. During an interview in 1985 with Terry Gross of NPR, Wrangler said that the crew knew it was Wrangler's first time with a woman, and they cheered him on as he lost his heterosexual virginity. Most of it was funny because um, they were really cheering me on. You know, this is really like, boy, the kid's really coming into his own today. <laughs> My son, you are a man. And all these people with, uh, that had, uh, the, the crew's always standing out the set with bagels and things. You know, they're always eating, those people. And standing there with their bagels and saying, yay, Jack. <laughs> the China Sisters, which would not fly by any means today, is a film structured around a gay guy who the titular characters make straight by the end of the film. From there, Wrangler would go on to star in other films, including The Devil in Miss Jones 2, the sequel to the mega-hit original The Devil in Miss Jones. While Wrangler was amassing acclaim for his work in the porn industry, his career in theater began to take shape. He co-starred in the play T-Shirts with playwright and actor Robert Patrick in 1979. In 1985, Wrangler wrote the book for the musical I Love You, Jimmy Valentine, which starred Margaret Whiting, who Wrangler would be involved in a romantic relationship with and later marry. Following that, Wrangler would appear in a play called Soul Survivor, a comedy about a gay man whose lover dies of AIDS. In 1984, Wrangler wrote his autobiography, and by the mid-1980s, Wrangler said goodbye to his adult career after his wife, Margaret Whiting, demanded it, and he appeared in his final porn film, Rising Star. Wrangler considered himself close to asexual for a good amount of his career. He also didn't consider himself bisexual or straight. He considered himself gay, but he would never want to be in a relationship with another man due to what he considered competitiveness. With a woman, he said, you can compete, but from different points of view. With that in mind, let's talk about Jack Wrangler's relationship with Margaret Whiting. Wrangler met Margaret Whiting, a big band era singer whose hits included That Old Black Magic and Moonlight in Vermont, in 1976 at Ted Hook's onstage nightclub. After they met, Wrangler invited Whiting to his one-man show the next night. A romance would soon blossom between Wrangler and Whiting, who was 22 years his senior. Wrangler and Whiting were criticized for their relationship, and Wrangler was accused of turning straight and entering the relationship for money. The early years of their relationship proved to be difficult, and they both struggled with Wrangler's homosexuality. During a turning point in their relationship, Wrangler vowed to never be with another man while he was with Whiting and the couple wed in 1994. Of her relationship with Jack Wrangler, Margaret Whiting told People magazine in May of 1987, Honestly, there's so much unhappiness in the world. If you can find someone who makes you happy and you can make him happy, then come on, who cares? We're not hurting anybody. We're not doing anything wrong. We're enjoying each other. That's all. After leaving the porn industry, Wrangler predominantly occupied his time with Whiting's career and became an active part of the Manhattan cabaret scene. Wrangler was a master teacher at the Eugene O'Neill Cabaret Symposium in Waterford, Connecticut for several years in the early 1990s. During this period, he and his wife taught young students about the Great American Songbook at the Sundance Festival in association with the Johnny Mercer Foundation. Jack Wrangler was one of the first gay porn superstars of the golden era of gay porn. His muscular good looks and tousled blonde hair quickly brought him a great deal of attention on and off screen. As Wrangler, he became an icon of the gay liberation movement. As Outcyclopedia, a gay-oriented online reference wrote, many gay men in the 70s and 80s cited Jack as an integral part of their coming out process, as his against the stereotypes on-screen persona helped show that a man could be gay and still be a man. And while Wrangler was extremely popular within the gay community, he eventually fell in love with his wife, Margaret Whiting, the famous vocalist who was 22 years his senior. A lifelong smoker, Jack Wrangler died of complications of emphysema after a long illness on April 7, 2009. He was survived by his wife, Margaret, who passed away in 2011. Fun Fact Wrangler's father worked on the television show Bonanza, which starred a young Michael Landon. Michael Landon became an object of desire for a young Jack Wrangler, who, if he didn't know he was attracted to men, he knew at that moment. Wrangler would go on to recount that one day his father caught him in a walk-in closet 
um, thinking about Michael Landon. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Telegram. If you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn, where you can help this YouTube channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Cheers. Cheers.